folks, I'm Pastor Jason. Welcome to The Connection. Good to have you with me. I want to talk about the thoughts of the Lord. I think this is, in Psalms chapter 40, this is absolutely an amazing, amazing scripture. I mean, when you read it and your mind starts to, to dwell on it and you begin to just break it down, it's just absolutely amazing. You know, there are people that struggle with this idea that maybe God is upset with them that maybe God doesn't care about them, that God's a million miles away, his mind, you know, is not even drifting towards you. I've heard people, I've heard people even say this who really don't <clears throat> know a lot about, you know, living for God and say, well, he, well, he's he's over here doing this and that and he's not thinking about me or he's not worried about me or that that is so not true. I mean, that's, that's a, a massive lie from the enemy who wants us to think that God is not, that his mind are, is not on us or he's not concerned about us. You know, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world that God is orchestrating, that God's hand is in, that God is moving, working, and shaping. I mean, we're seeing things happen right now in real time that, you know, our grandparents, you know, never never fathomed would, would happen or see. And, and yet but through all of this we see the hand of God working and we see the hand of God just moving in tremendous ways and and if you you really got to pay attention right now and that's something I want to stress to everyone is that the things that are taking place right now in this world we've got to pay attention to them because if we if we don't first of all we're going to miss some things and some timing events that are going to happen but yet the thing that I really want people to notice is how God is working. And I know it seems like right now that um, the world and and the, the liberal agenda is so good at putting all the spotlight on these things and agendas that they have, which we call evil, because they are evil. They're anti-Christ. They're against God. And, and but yet, through all the media outlets, <clears throat> excuse me, through all the different various uh, organizations, news organizations and things, they seem to shine the light on things that highlight evil, which the Bible says that in the last days they would call evil good and good evil. So we're seeing that playing out right now. But yet, if you are a child of God and you have any discernment about you at all, through every bit of this, you can see the hand of God moving. And that is the thing that I want us to really focus on is through all of these things, that the enemy's trying to um, take center stage on it all and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. That behind it all, the child of God can look and see, that's the hand of God moving. That's the hand of God working. That's the will of God coming to pass. Because I want to tell you, folks, God's mind is on his church. His mind is on you. His mind is thinking about the best ways possible to to bring the message of the gospel to light through all the darkness that is taking place in the world and i'm, and I'm telling you something it is so true what i heard a man say years ago the darker the night the brighter the light it doesn't take a lot of light to change the darkness it doesn't you go into a dark room and there's something about the light no matter how tiny your light is you're going to penetrate that darkness and you're going to have the ability to see and so understand the power of the light that lives inside of you. It is powerful. It is mighty. And it changes. It changes things. It changes things. So, so when you understand that where you are and who you are, that you're a child of God and God has placed you in this time and age and in this, like, like Esther, like he did with Esther. <clears throat> as as Mordecai told her, who knows whether thou art called to the kingdom for such a time as this? He said, "Listen, to, you know, this is no coincidence that you're here, and it's no coincidence that you're here right now either. That you're alive at this moment in the earth. So God put you here for a reason. God wants to work through you. God wants to bless you. God wants to do amazing things in your life. And His mind is on you. His mind is on you, and I'm going to prove it to you. As a matter of fact, it's it's more than just God has His mind on you." It's the stuff he's thinking about. It's it's not just the stuff he's thinking about. It is the amount of stuff he's thinking about. I mean, let's go to the scripture. Psalms chapter 40. And I want to read the scripture to you today. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 5. Listen, listen to what David says. 
Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works. So that word, excuse me, that word right there, many, means innumerable. You can't, you can't count them. Many, my O Lord my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done. So, not what you're going to do, David said, but what you've already done. Okay? He said, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. In other words, David said, there's the all the thoughts that you've had toward us. He said, we can't start categorizing them and say, okay, number one, this right here, number two, this right here, number three. There's no way we can do it, he said. He said, they cannot be recounted to you. In other words, if you start to sit down and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to thank you for everything you've done for me. You couldn't do it. There's no way. It's not possible. That's what David is saying. And you know that yourself. He said, if I would declare and speak of them, there are more that can be numbered. Not just the wonderful works which God has done. He said, but even your thoughts toward us. He said, you can't number them. <laughs> it's, it's, and then he goes on to say in verse 17 of the same chapter, he said, <clears throat> but I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. And I think this is absolute. I feel, I feel the anointing right now. This is absolutely just one of these, one of these things that I, I read and I get to talking about and I talk, I've been talking to other people about it. That just brings me a lot of joy because when I think about, man, God thinks about me. Now, you know, I didn't come from the greatest of backgrounds and you know, of course, no no family is perfect. I think there's a lot of dysfunction probably in every family. Some some people are just better at covering it up. But, you know, and, and coming from the background that I came from, you know, it, it took a lot of convincing for me to understand that God has a plan for my life. When he talks about the thoughts of God toward us, that, that deals with his plans, his purpose. It deals with his desire for you. You know, and, and it's just an absolute amazing thing to think that the God of all glory, with, with as much as he's got to do in the day, you know how many millions of people are crying out to God for healing and deliverance and help and, and praying and the answers and questions and all this thing. And, but he thinks about you. He's his mind right now with all these other millions of things that are going on, running the, running the cosmos, running the heavens, orchestrating things in the earth. <clears throat> and we're seeing that happen right now. Besides all of that, he's thinking about you and me. He is thinking. David said, "I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks about me." He said, "I am, I'm, you know." And every every time, every every now and then, we get to that state of where we, you know, not not saying necessarily financially, but poor and needy. Maybe in our spirit, maybe we're feeling poor in our spirit. Maybe we're, we're needy in our soul and spirit. He said, "But yet the Lord thinks upon me." He said, "His mind is on me." He said, "And they are too many to arrange in order, or too great to be compared to anything else." So somebody can be thinking about you right now and you can get a package in the mail. You know, someone just sends you a little gift or whatever it may be and said, I've just been thinking about you, been thinking about you. And that's great when people think about you. And it, doesn't it feel good when you know that somebody maybe you've not talked to in, in a while, you know, that they're, they're thinking about you. They're praying for you. They're thinking about you and they send you a little gift or whatever it may be. And and what it, what it does to your spirit, what it does to your, your life, it just brings a, a, a joy to your life. So when you think about if we, if, we can, if we can put that in the same context of God is thinking about you and me. Of course, you know, he's he's more active and involved in our life than anything else in the world is. But yet he's thinking about us. His mind is on us and he wants to do something good for us. In other words, David says that the thoughts that God is having about us is beyond the ability to compute. He said because they're too numerous. In other words, they can't be expressed by or they cannot be expressed in any language of man. You think about it. If you tried to put into words how good God has been to you or the thoughts or the works that God has done in your life, you would run out of words. There's just not the ability, first of all, to numerically count the wonderful things of God. First of all, let's just back up a second. David said there is no way humanly, humanly that I can, first of all, put them in order in other words, this is the first thing, this is the second thing, this is the third thing. He said, secondly, he said they're just too many. He said that humanly I could not count them or I don't have the words 
to express them. And another, another thing that David's saying too as well, he said, there is nothing here in the world that I can compare them to. That, that is amazing, folks. That is just absolutely amazing. He said, we just don't have the words in our vocabulary to articulate the things that God has done and he's thinking about. I mean, look at your life. There are things in your life that have happened that you never thought anything about. It's true, isn't it? It's absolutely true. There are things that have transpired in your life. I mean, I can just sit here and think about, you know, 30 years of my my life, the past 30, 31 years of my life, and which which is a long time. I mean, I'm older than that, so I know you may not be able to tell, but I am. I'm older than that. Well, let's go back to the 51 years of my life. Of course, first couple of years, can't remember a thing about it. Well, as a matter of fact, a lot of my past, I can't remember. But anyway, growing up and, and the different things that took place. I mean, from the time you were a teenager into young adulthood, and as you go on through the, you know, the part of your life where you, where you get to right now. I mean, look back and just, just matter of fact, spend some time today just kind of, you know, going back over the, the events that happened in your life, the things that took place, and how either God orchestrated them or how God stepped in and in, intervened in them. And when your path was going one way, God just began to turn it and hear you going another direction. And the thing is, God's thinking about this stuff, guys. God is thinking about this stuff. His, his mind every day in, in the bible says that in psalms chapter 55 it says his his ways are not always his thoughts are not our thoughts <clears throat> so we understand this one thing that there's no way that we can think on the level that god is thinking except for when well, the bible says we have the mind of christ <clears throat> excuse me and when the bible says the word mind the mind means attitude of christ so we have the attitude of christ so so i don't i don't know if there's any way that we can truly have the mind of god because he's, he's so much greater than all of us, but we can have the attitude of God, which we desperately so need. And what sort of things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, to be a good report, to be a virtue, be a praise, to think upon these things. And we understand that we are transformed, the Bible said, by the renewing of our mind. But that takes an act of God. That's his thoughts just just penetrating into our mind and our thoughts and, and rearranging how we think about things and what we think about. But there's no way that you and I can see here today and say... I know what God's thinking about me. I know what God's thinking about me. Because we don't have any idea. I mean, we may base that off of what we've been praying about. Or maybe we may base that off of maybe a dream we've had. A vision. Maybe a prophetic word that someone has spoken over our life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe we're, um, you know, we're kind of figuring out, that, okay, well, this is what the God is doing. But yeah, and that may be true. And you may have spatterings or maybe these little things that say, okay, I know God wants to do this for me. God wants to do that for me. God. But what about all this stuff outside the realm of those few words that maybe you've been given that God's thinking about it? You don't have any idea. I have seen it personally firsthand in my life and in my, my wife and I's life how the Lord has just orchestrated one thing after another and brought us to certain places. And we, we would have never thought of that. I mean, it's, it is absolutely an amazing thing. So you know what? You've got you to give God some credit here today and say, God, if I've been limiting you to this narrow way of thinking that, okay, this is this is all that God's thinking about. You, need, you say, God, I'm sorry for that. His mind is so far out from where we are and what we're thinking. And his mind is thinking about all this stuff about you and me. And it is absolutely amazing. I mean, go to Jeremiah chapter 29 and read what God was thinking about the people of Israel even after they had sinned and been sent into bondage in Babylon he said for I know the thoughts I think toward you thoughts to prosper you to give you peace to give you hope and an expectation a future this is what God was saying about his people and God's saying the same thing about you today his mind is on you he is thinking about you and the thoughts that he's having about your life cannot be compared to anything else, are way too numerous. You can't count them all. If you tried to arrange them all in order, you couldn't do it. And you don't have the ability with your vocabulary to articulate everything that God is thinking about. That, my friends, is 
amazing. Absolutely amazing. So you know what? Pull your mind out of the gutter or whatever it's locked into and maybe you're dealing with depression and I'm not making a lot of any of this maybe you're dealing with depression maybe you're dealing with discouragement maybe you feel like and I know people have felt this way and I'm not judging you for this maybe people have felt like that God doesn't think about them or maybe that God isn't aware of them or God doesn't care about what they're going these are lies from the enemy folks his mind is on you right now and he is thinking about things that are going to transform your life that are going to bless you, that are going to show you how much He loves you. This is what this is what He's doing. So with all this stuff going on, His mind is on you. And the thoughts that He thinks towards you are thoughts of peace and not evil. He loves you. He loves you more than your mind and thoughts can fathom. Amen. Let's pray together today. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this tremendous opportunity that we have to come together in your presence. God, to know that your mind is on us today, Lord. With everything that is taking place in this world, God, you are looking at our world right now and the things that are taking place and the things that are taking shape in our life. And Lord, your thoughts are penetrating into the deepest recesses of our life. And they are working and they are moving and they are shaping things they are changing things that breakthroughs are going to come blessings are going to come miracles are going to happen because of the way you think toward us and lord i pray today that you would show your glory into these people's life that lord they would see the hand of god that their mind would be able to perceive the hand of god moving and working in them and to know that yes lord you are thinking about me and i thank you for that and it's humbling it is humbling and it it is amazing and we give you praise father for the way you think about us. And we love you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name. God bless you today. Be encouraged. Hit that like button. We appreciate it today. Uh, check our services out too. This is your first time being here on the on our channel. This is The Connection. We also have our Sunday services on there as well. So we appreciate you being with us today. And until next time, stay connected with God. God bless you.